Ethernet, unlike Wi-Fi, doesn't have authentication by default. That means that anyone can simply plug themselves into an Ethernet network and gain access to the network. So as an example, at home, kids may be banned from using the Wi-Fi network, but that doesn't stop them from simply taking a network adapter, plugging it into their phone, as an example, and plugging the device into the ethernet network and gaining access to the network. That's a very simple example of how to bypass authentication on a Wi-Fi network and gain access to the network. Now, what I've mentioned that on YouTube videos, a lot of people think that's dumb, but this kind of stuff happens all the time, especially in corporate networks. I had found an abandoned office, and this is me taking a picture showing that I had found the abandoned office. This was my backpack in here. You can see that in here, they had wireless jacks. So obviously, one of the first things that I talk about, right, when I talk about getting access to a location is to check those physical jacks to see if those physical jacks have port security enabled on them. 99.9% .9 of the companies don't have port security enabled on the switches because it's an administrative nightmare, you know, to enable port security and have to disable it every time somebody wants to move a computer around. So I found a jack like this inside of this office, and I set up my Wi-Fi pineapple inside of that office and set it next to a window. And I just set it up in there basically as as a Wi-Fi repeater. And what I then did in this little red circle up here, this is the parking garage. And so I drove my rental car up there to the top of that parking garage, David, and I connected to my Wi-Fi access point. I was using the, the pineapple as a Wi-Fi access point. And you can kind of see that this that I've got highlighted down here was my access point that I had set up in here. I was able to connect to it and have access to the corporate network using a Wi-Fi pineapple right from the parking garage. So as an example, if I've got a switch in a corporate network, nothing stops me from simply plugging myself into the network. There is no authentication by default on ethernet. That means that hackers, as an example, can simply plug themselves into your network using hacking tools, such as the shock jack from Hack5. This is a small little device that allows a hacker to run scripts on a network, attack a network, or just gather information about a network. Very simple to plug yourself into an ethernet network and gain access because again, by default, there is no authentication on an ethernet network. So from a security point of view, this is a risk. Another problem is that users could bring in multiple devices and plug themselves into your corporate network. So as an example, a user could simply take the ethernet cable from the back of their PC and plug that into a switch like this little Netgear switch and then plug multiple devices into the switch, which gives them access to your network. So in a corporate environment, that means that devices that you don't control could get access to your network. Nothing stops a user from taking devices from home and simply plugging them into your network. But what makes this even worse is they could take your corporate network and plug that into a Wi-Fi router like this and then allow devices from the outside, which could be phones, hacking devices, or who knows what, to gain access to your network through a little Wi-Fi network that they've connected to your corporate network. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to enable port security on a Cisco switch so that you can stop users from plugging in unauthorized devices into your network, such as switches or Wi-Fi access points or routers, or simply other devices into your network. This video is part of my free CCNA course. Use the link below to watch the entire playlist. In section 5.7 of the CCNA exam, port security is mentioned. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna show you how to set up port security to stop rogue devices from accessing a network. So again, just note Ethernet does not have any security by default. Port security is not enabled by default. You have to configure that. This gives you basic authentication based on source MAC addresses. The switch is gonna look at frames received and look at the source MAC address and determine if the device is allowed based on the source MAC address. This is not user authentication. You need 802.1x for user authentication. Port security gives you very basic security based on MAC addresses. The idea with security is that you use multiple mechanisms to improve the security of your network. This is a very basic way to implement authentication. You can decide which MAC addresses are allowed. You may decide that only one MAC address is allowed or that multiple MAC addresses are allowed. If, as an example, you have a PC 
connected to a phone, forgive my bad drawings, connected to a switch. The switch will need to allow multiple MAC addresses. When you configure port security, you're gonna need to allow the MAC address of the phone as well as the MAC address of the PC so that they can both send traffic into the network. So if you've got a situation where just one PC is connected to a port on a switch, you would only allow one MAC address, but if you've got multiple devices such as a PC and a phone connected to the switch, then you need to allow multiple MAC addresses on this port on the switch. You'll stop different scenarios with port security. As an example, you'll stop rogue devices from simply being connected into your network. So the example I used once again was the shark jack. But in this example here, I've got Kali Linux running on a computer and I could connect that to the network. The idea is to stop people from simply connecting hacking devices such as this directly to your network. It doesn't need to be a hacking device. You could simply stop users from connecting devices to your network. So in this example, they have got a little switch connected to a port on the switch, and you want to stop users from connecting multiple devices, which could be hacking devices or just unauthorized devices with a little switch such as this Netgear switch to your network. And as mentioned, you want to stop rogue access points such as this from being connected to your network. You don't want users to bring in rogue Wi-Fi routers or access points, which then allow people from outside your organization access to your network. So you want to block those types of devices. Now it's okay to discuss the theory, but I think it's going to mean a lot more if you simply see this. So I'm going to configure port security right now on the switch. So I'm going to show you a very simple example of port security right now, and then I'll show you more complex examples. I'll show you an example where we have a PC connected to the network and then connect another device to the network and show you that that device is blocked. So what we'll do is configure port security on the switch by going to global configuration mode, going onto an interface, making sure that it's an access port, and then enabling port security. Port security can be enabled on either an access port or a trunk port, but you have to explicitly set that. So you're gonna have to say this port is an access port or this port is a trunk port, and then you can enable port security. These are the defaults. By default, only one MAC address is permitted. Port security is disabled by default, and the violation mode is shut down. There are three violation modes that you need to know. By default, we have shutdown, where when there's a violation, the port is shut down. We have restrict and we have protect. Protect doesn't give you any notifications. As an example, there are no SNMP traps. With restrict, you'll get notifications when something happens. But shutdown is the default where a port is error disabled when the secure MAC address limit is exceeded. By default, that's one SNMP trap notification is synced when something happens. But again, it's all very well talking about this. You're gonna learn a lot more, I think, if I simply show you this practically. Okay, so on port gigabit 101, let's configure port security. Okay, so on the switch, show run interface gigabit 101. There's no configuration on the switch at the moment. So conf t interface gigabit 101. Notice what happens when I try and use the command switch port port security. So I'll type switch port port security and press enter. We are told that the command is rejected because it's a dynamic port. We have to use the command switch port mode and specify the mode. When configured as a dynamic port, the default port security doesn't work. So switch port mode access. I'll try the command again. So switch port port security. Notice that's now been enabled. So show run interface gigabit 101. We can see that the port is an access port and that port security is enabled. So show port security press enter. Default of violation mode is shut down. We didn't configure that. That is the default mode. On this port where we enabled port security, notice the max secure MAC address is one. The current MAC address is one. And that's because I have a PC connected to that port. So going back to our defaults, default maximum MAC addresses is one. Default violation mode is shut down. If so again, we can see default is shut down. Default max MAC addresses is one. If I type show port security, look at address, we can see the address that's been learnt. MAC address ending in 9D61. This port is connected 
to this laptop over here. So let's have a look at the MAC address of that laptop. So I'll open up a command prompt. So if I type the command ipconfig and let's rather do ipconfig slash all. Notice ethernet adapter 10. This is a USB gigabit ethernet adapter. It has MAC address ending in 9D. 61 it has this default gateway. It's been allocated this IP address, 192.168.2.12. So that is the MAC address, but we could also do something like show IP DHCP binding, and we'll be able to see that that MAC address has this IP address according to the DHCP server. And that's what we see on the PC over here. So this device's MAC address has been learned by the switch through port security, MAC address is over here. It's on VLAN one. Default is secure dynamic. We haven't manually configured the MAC address. I'm gonna show you various options with regards to port security where you can statically configure a MAC address or you can use something called sticky where the MAC address is automatically added to the running config. So it's important to understand that there are different tables. We have a MAC address table. So show MAC address table shows us that this MAC address is on gigabit 101. Notice the difference here, it's shown as static rather than dynamic. This MAC address was learnt on gigabit 103, the other port, that's this PC. When we use port security, the MAC address is shown as static rather than dynamic in the MAC address table. So we firstly have a MAC address table. Be careful if you use dynamic, that's not gonna show up because when port security is enabled, it's shown as static in the MAC address table. So we have a MAC address table. We also have a port security table. So if we look at show port security address, we can see the secure MAC address table. So we have a MAC address table. There's the standard MAC address table that we have on a switch like this, which is shown using this command. And then we have the port security secure MAC address table. We can see the MAC address table over there. And then we have the running config. So show run interface gigabit 101. The MAC address is not shown over here. But you could statically configure a MAC address or use sticky, which writes the MAC address to the running config. So different tables here, because we used what's called secure dynamic mode, we didn't statically configure the MAC address. It's only shown in the MAC address table and in the port security secure MAC address table. Another option, show port security interface gigabit 101. Notice that port security is enabled on this interface. The port status is secure up because the interface is up. It hasn't been shut down. But if there's a violation, the interface will be shut down. This is the last MAC address and VLAN that we learned about. So 9D61 in VLAN 1. Maximum MAC addresses is one. Total MAC addresses that we've learned is one. We haven't manually configured any MAC addresses and we aren't using sticky MAC addresses. There have been no violations at this point, but let's change that. So what I'll do is take my little Netgear switch and I'll unplug the PC from the switch and plug it directly into the Netgear switch. So let's plug it in here. You can see the port has gone down there. What I'll do is plug the Cisco switch into the little Netgear switch. So we now have the Netgear switch plugged into the Cisco switch on gigabit 101. You can see the interface has now come up again. So show IP interface brief, gigabit 101 is up. Show port security. We only have one MAC address at the moment. If we look at that interface, we can see that that MAC address is in VLAN one. Interface is up at the moment. But what I'll do is move this PC to the little Netgear switch. You can see here that gigabit 103 went down. I'll plug that PC into the switch here and notice immediately we get port security violation error detected on gigabit 101, putting the interface into error disabled state. A violation caused by this MAC address ending in 213F. So if we have a look at that computer, it's the Dell at the top there. I'll open up PowerShell, IP config slash all. This ethernet adapter has a MAC address ending in 213F, which is the MAC address we see over here. That caused the port to go down. Only one MAC address is allowed by default. Show port security. Configuration is maximum MAC address is one. Violation count at the moment is one. Port has been shut down. 
call to action is to shut it down. So if we have a look at that interface, Gigabit 101, notice the status is now secure shutdown. The port has been shut down because the violation mode is shut down, which is the default. We've enabled port security on this interface. This is the last MAC address that we learned on VLAN 1. Violation count is now 1. Show IP interface brief. Notice the port is down. We have our cable connected, but the port has been shut down. If we have a look at that interface, so show interface gigabit 101, scrolling up here, notice the interface is down, the line protocol is down because it's been error disabled. When we use the default mode of shutdown and a violation occurs, the port is error disabled. It's basically shut down. It's not administratively down, it's error disabled. So port is down because of error disabled. That means that you have to manually shut and no shut the interface to bring it up. This is obviously an administrative nightmare. You've got to manually shut and no shut the port down. So I've got to shut it down and then I've got to no shut it to bring it up again. So notice interface was administratively shut down. It's now come up again. So you can see it's up there. But what we'll notice is it gets shut down again as MAC addresses are learnt. So show interface gigabit 101. At the moment, it's showing up. The reason why is if I type show spanning tree, that port is not forwarding yet because spanning tree has to learn if there are any loops. You can see that the port is now forwarding. VLAN one has come up, port is forwarding. But what we'll probably notice in a moment is the interface goes down once traffic is forwarded by the PCs. So show port security. Violation count at the moment is one on that interface. So show port security interface shows us that. You can see the interface is up. So secure up, spanning trees are now forwarding. What I'll do is get the PCs to try and get IP addresses. So when I renew the IP address on that laptop at the top there, notice we're getting a port security violation error. Port is being put into the error disable state. Violation occurred on the interface. Interface has gone down. So if we have a look at port security interface gigabit 101, notice the port is now shut down. We have two violations. So show port security again. You can see that the security violation count is two. This port will be shut down. That's a security violation action. And we can see that when we look at the interface. So show port security interface, the status is secure shutdown. Two violations have occurred. This is the last MAC address that has caused problems. Show interface gigabit 101. That shows us that the port is down. It's been error disabled. So again, default mode in port security is to shut the interface down. The issue with that is that you have to manually shut and no shut the port to get it working again. Another problem here is the first MAC address that's learnt is determined to be the right MAC address. So first device that connects to the network, that is the device that's allowed. You're not configuring which MAC address is the right MAC address. It's simply the first MAC address that sends traffic. As soon as another device sends traffic, the port is shut down. Another issue here is the configuration is not saved. So if I plug in my device today, that's deemed to be the right MAC address. But if that times out or the port goes down and then you plug in your device, then your MAC address is determined to be the right MAC address. We are not explicitly setting the correct or right MAC address or the allowed MAC address if you prefer. The switch simply says that the first MAC address that is learnt is the right MAC address. So this is not necessarily ideal in all situations. You may want to manually configure a MAC address. You may want to save that information so that if the switch reboots, it still remembers which MAC address is permitted on a port.